for today is called the 10 No Challenge. 10 No Challenge. Can anyone guess what that is? Try to get 10 no's. Right. Ask for permission and get, get those 10 no's. Precisely. So why is this mean teacher Eric Kim making you do this assignment? To feel more comfortable engaging. OK. Um, generally, the fear we have in photography, at least for me, the fear of rejection is often worse than the rejection itself. And actually, believe it or not, it's hard to get 10 no's. So my suggestion is go out in the streets of New York City, look for the 10 scariest motherfuckers <laughs> who you are sure will say no. I'm going to do this assignment too because there's a lot of guys with neck tattoos or like machine guns I'm, I'm quite afraid of. And the reason why this is a good assignment is that if you're trying to get rejected, it actually changes your mentality. It makes you a tougher person. Like uh, classic things that they do in uh, sales or if you have like entry level consulting job, whatever, just make a hundred phone calls and get rejected. And therefore you do not fear the rejection. And so once again, I'm not saying that you guys always have to ask for permission, but these are just different street photography tools you can add to your bat tool belt, right? So that's the first assignment. So 10 no assignment we may get 10 yeses yeah. before we get 10 no's. Exactly. And we go ahead and take the yes, take the yeah. photo. So um, this is the second part of it. If by any chance your subject does say yes, you must at least take 10 pictures of them. Okay? So if somebody says, oh yeah, buddy, no problem. You take my photo. Then you have to try to take at least 10 pictures of them. Some ideas. Just photograph their face, say, hey, you see this nice brick wall? The light looks better. Do you mind standing in here? Oh, like, what's what's cooking for supper tonight? Oh, and then you get hand, you get natural hand gestures. So to make an interesting pose picture with permission is actually one of the most difficult things to do. To uh, my favorite portrait photographer is actually Richard Avedon. Mm -hmm. He shot portraits where he's in a studio asking for permission, obviously, but he really did capture soul and soul. A funny story. Um, it's like uh, the, he did a portrait shoot for Harper's Bazaar of like the Queen and Duchess of some like English something, and you know the the prim and proper couple are always having their like royal smile, their Princess Diana look. Then Richard Avedon goes, "Oh, Duchess, yes. Do you guys have any animals? Yeah, we have a puppy. His name is Woofy." How old is Woofy? Yeah, his, his 10. Oh, he doesn't got much l longer to live, huh? No, no, maybe five years. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, can you just imagine Woofy dying? <laughs> and then she goes like, and then her, uh, the, the man, uh, the Dutch, is also like this, and then he takes the picture, and then he publishes the picture, like the, the couple hate it, and the people are like, you're so unethical, you're such an asshole, whatever. But I think sometimes to be a good photographer, and a good artist, you kind of need to be a little bit sly, sometimes, depends on the situation, to really capture someone's soul. Or even, not even capturing their, their soul, but what you think their soul is. So I think a good street photography is slightly unethical in some regards. Because if you're 100%, 100% too ethical in street photography, you're never going to shoot a picture because you're not 100% sure how they're going to feel being on the other side of the camera. Because the truth is, not everyone likes to be photographed. So that's what makes street photography so difficult, but also beautiful, is that it's hard, it's scary, it's difficult, but I think all of us have a higher altruistic, like good purpose, you're trying to make art. And so knowing in the path to making great street photographs, you kind of need to take these kind of chances, right? So once again, first part, 10 no challenge, if they say yes, try to take at least 10 pictures of them. Um, excuse me, what was it you spell the last name of the photographer? Oh, so Richard Avedon, R-I-C-H-A-R-D, Avedon, A-V-E-D-O-N. Um, okay, so that's 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 the first time. So let's say you get your 10 nodes, okay? The next thing I want you guys to do is, I want you guys to make a candid, without permission, a Zen street photograph. So what I mean by a Zen street photograph is, I want you guys to make a simple picture. Simple picture, okay? So 
I think there's two things which make a good picture. First thing is simple. The second thing is dynamic. A simple picture is a picture with a simple background, uh, a, just a single subject, just like one person, or a simple hand gesture, right? So that's simple. Dynamic is there's emotion, there's drama, there's danger, fear. So like maybe the dynamism could be the look in their eyes, or maybe if the hand gesture is like a middle finger, that's quite dynamic. Or what you could even do is in composition to make a more dynamic composition, tilt the camera. They're called a Dutch angle, which this is actually funny. It's actually supposed to be called, not Dutch like people from Amsterdam, it's supposed to be called the Deutsche angle because a lot of German filmmakers would tilt their video cameras to make the scene look a little bit off balance to add and heighten the drama in the picture. So it's called like, so I guess somehow along the line, us Americans, like we all screw things up. It's supposed to be called the Deutsche Angle, but someone's like, oh, that looks like Dutch. Oh, like, yeah, the, the people from Amsterdam. Yeah, so it somehow became Dutch Angle. But a lot of great film noir, like The Third Man, produced in the 1950s, you'll see a lot of these film noir images tilted. So you can make a simple picture. So like just find a simple background, like a white wall or a red brick wall, and just wait for people to enter the frame. But ways you can make more dynamics. Wait until you kind of have people full stride where you have their legs shaped like a V or two diagonal lines to make it more dynamic. Or wait until somebody does this or for somebody to point or just tilt your camera. Another way you can make a more simple picture is when you're shooting, um, when you're shooting a picture, if you're looking through the viewfinder or using your LCD screen, look at the edges of the frame. Try to make the edges of the frame as simple as possible without clutter or distractions. Or even when you're looking through the viewfinder, don't get tunnel vision and just look at the inner 25% of the frame. Look at the edges of the frame. That's probably the best composition uh, tip I could ever give you guys is if you just look at the edges of the frame, make sure the edges of the frame are simple and clean. Your composition is going to look good. Another pro tip is if you ever see diagonals or leading lines in a picture, tilt your camera or try to frame in a way that you're trying to connect the diagonals of the frame to make nice leading lines. Um, so once again, uh, the first assignment is the 10 no challenge. If they do say yes, try to get uh, at least 10 pictures of them. Then like the last one is the Zen street photography assignment. Try to make simple pictures, and then on top of that, try to make it dynamic. But it's very, very hard to make a simple picture, and it's also very hard to make a dynamic picture. So the, the a Zen assignment, just try to make simple pictures. Uh, Leonardo, da Vinci, uh, Leonardo da Vinci once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Often simple is used in a negative term, like you're a simple tin, or that's too simple. We gotta think more complex, but to distill your photography and make it as simple as possible is one of the most difficult things you guys can do. One of the greatest photographers, I think, who made really good simple yet dynamic pictures is probably Richard, uh, sorry, Joseph Kudelka. It's spelled J-O-S-E-F, space Kudelka, K-O-U-L-D-E-L-K-A, I believe. Black and white, simple yet stark, dynamic pictures. So those are the assignments for today. You guys can all remember that. And the last part is just have fun. If you're not having fun, you're doing something I'm like an overgrown child with a camera. It drives Cindy nuts because she's always trying to like walk and talk with me and now I just stop and I'll randomly take pictures. It drives her nuts. So thank you, Cindy. But be like a child. Take your play very seriously. So if you're a child playing with Lego blocks or buildings or whatever, they're so focused and they're building this thing like it's the most important thing in the world. Or you're like a kid at the, at the beach, right? Like you're making sandcastles. They're so focused. And even though they're having fun, they take it very seriously, right? Like try to mess with a kid in the middle of playtime. Like, no, you're gonna have one mm -hmm. angry tyrant kid, right? So when you're out shooting today, guys, please, 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 I want this to be a fun experience. If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. Try to make out ways you can make it more fun. And obviously I'm giving you these assignments, these tips or techniques. 
if you just see something you want to photograph, just photograph it. Like, I don't want to be a tiring teacher. Like, ultimately, this everything I'm sharing with you is just my opinion. It works for me. It's not going to work for you. But I just experiment. Uh, I recommend you guys to experiment. Just try something new because you know you guys are spending good money. You guys are traveling from all over the place. Just try something new. And after the workshop, whether you like it or not, say, okay, that part, Eric, what he said is good. I'll keep that. This other thing he said was a little baloney. I'll throw away the that. Because ultimately, you are the ultimate artist. You are the visual artist. You decide how to shoot, what to shoot. And ultimately, you want to kill Eric. Kim. Kill your teacher because I'll show you the path, but once you don't need me anymore, please, 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 just go down your own path and your own vision because it takes a lot of confidence to believe in yourself and not need someone else's approval. You'll know when you're a true master in photographer. Once you can make pictures, look at your own pictures, and not care about what other people think about your pictures, but be able to judge whether your own pictures are good or not. And also have faith that you're shooting interesting pictures by your own accord. Um, you guys feel pretty inspired? Feel pretty pumped up? Yeah, I'm wondering, what, uh, you're probably going to tell us this, but what, are, what about the logistics? Like, how do we keep up with each 